Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Sherlock 13 by Arcane Wonders. This is a two to four player game that takes about 15 minutes to play and is for ages 10 and up. And in the game, basically what's happened is a serious crime has been committed and all the notorious characters from Sherlock Holmes are now, now prime suspects. It could be Sherlock Holmes or Watson or Eileen Adler or even Moriarty. And basically you are going to be giving a set of clues, cards that will basically tell you who is not the person who has committed the crime, as well as one card in the middle of the field that is the perfect criminal. And everybody's gonna get a sheet of paper and on your turn you'll be selecting an action, whether it's asking everybody if they have a certain type of symbol or whether it be one specific person um, asking them questions or of course the main one which is trying to deduce who the suspect is or who the murderer or the person who committed the crime is. And if you get it right you win the game. If you're like oh it's Moriarty and you flip it over and it is, you win. If it's not, keep it hidden and put it face down and everybody else will have an opportunity as well. If some person guesses the person who committed the crime and they're right, then they win. However, if nobody's able to guess it, the last person left is the winner. And that's the basic idea of this game. It's kind of a take on clue slash deduction type games. Let's get into the setup, how to play, and then of course, my review. Setting up the game is actually quite simple. Each player is going to get a hidden player screen they're going to get one of these pads of paper, which is going to basically give them all the information they need for the different characters in the game and the symbols represented on their character cards. Depending on the number of players in the game, they'll get a number of cards along with one card in the middle. This is a three player game, which means that all players will get four cards from the deck and there will be one left over and that is the person who committed the crime. After you have your paper, your cards and your screen, you're basically ready to go. Choose a first player and have them choose one action. Gameplay for Sherlock 13 is actually quite simple as well. Basically on your turn you can choose one of three actions and you have information that you can go ahead and start with. So the beginning of the game you're going to write down all of the characters that you have and make sure that you know their symbols because this is going to come up throughout the game because you're trying to deduce what character is here based on the symbols that he or she has present on the card. So once you've written down all of your symbols here you're going to take one of the three actions. Action one is you can say a symbol and ask all players to raise their hand if they have a character of that symbol. So if I said, oh, does anybody have a skull? Everybody who has a character with a skull would raise their hand. The next action I could take instead of that one is I could point at a specific player and ask them how many of that specific type of symbol they have. So let's say that Bill rose their hand for skull, but nobody else did. I could say, Bill, how many skulls do you have? And he has to say, three or two, whatever it is based on the number of cards he has in his hand that represent that symbol. The last action you can take is the Jacques or the accuse action where you're going to say, I believe this character here in the middle is Moriarty, Irene Adler, Sherlock Holmes. And I'll get a chance to peek at the card. I'll take the card, I'll look at it, I'll place it face down. If I guessed correctly, the game is over, I reveal the card and I have been the winner. If I guess wrong though, I am now unable to accuse anymore and I can't win. However, I'm still in the game because people can ask me questions based on the cards that I have. And I stay in the game up until somebody's able to basically accuse correctly or there's only one player left remaining who has not had a chance to accuse but is also still left there. So you can actually win this game by either guessing correctly or letting everybody else get confused and guess incorrectly. That's the basic idea of play. It's really quite simple. Take one of the three actions and pass and continue going along, writing down any information or clues on this sheet here and making sure to make sure that nobody else can see what you're writing down. And basically with a series of deductive clues and reasoning, you can determine who's in the middle there and hopefully win the game. Sherlock 13 is a game of deduction, logic, and reasoning. You are basically trying to deduce the character in the middle and you are trying to figure out what symbols they have and then deducing them on your chart. Your chart is going to tell you what symbols each of the players have and how many of each symbol exists in the game. And as you ask players either, hey, does any of you have any characters with pipes? Or hey, Bill, do you have any, how many characters with pipes do you have? You're going to be de determining, okay, which characters can exist in this middle space here. Can this be a character that has a pipe? And if they have a pipe, now we've narrowed it down to a certain number of suspects. If I have a character with, I don't know, uh, I have two characters, Sebastian and Irene, they both have skulls. I can ask all the other players, do you have a skull? 
And if none of them have a Skull character, it's very likely that the one in the middle is going to be James Moriarty, because I would have had the other two. However, you can also get some bits of information that might be helpful, but not completely helpful. Like, maybe you have a certain number of characters with pipes, and then you know that, okay, there's two characters out there that have pipes, um, but we need to know which characters we can roll out so that this character in the middle can be deduced. So if a character has like a pipe and a necklace, you might have to determine who has the characters with necklaces, how many, and who has characters with pipes, and how many, and from there, rule out the characters to determine the one that's in the middle. It's a light game, it's a simple game, it's a 15 minute game. Basically, you're just asking questions, two main questions, and then you're making a guess. Now, as the game progresses, the tension kind of ramps up a bit because you know that they are as close to finding out who it is as you are, with only the differentiation between the characters that they currently have in hand. Some hands are better than others, and it's possible you get a strong god hand, but the game's so quick, it doesn't really matter all that much. But those little games might not be as fun if you literally have all the characters with, uh, with pipes, you have four cards and they're all pipe characters, and you ask everybody, does anybody have a character with a pipe? And they say no, you pretty much narrow down to the suspect. But it's never that easy. Most of the time it's going to be different characters in the space that have multiple symbols and everybody having a certain number of symbols of different types that you're gonna have to kind of list out. Listening to other players and what they say and what they're looking for, and of course utilizing that information to best guess with your specific action that you'll have. This is a game that is also going to have uh, the basics explained to you on this little sheet here. It's a good way to kind of keep locked in your answers, and it's a setup and quick play game. You can start up a new game and go through it. If you're a clue lover, you want something a little lighter, a little quicker, something that doesn't require a lot of setup, this is gonna be a cool game with logic that kind of will relate to you. Additionally too, this is a Sherlock game. It's gonna have all the different characters you know and love with all the different inspectors, uh, the main characters like Adler and Minecraft and Watson and Holmes and Moriarty. There's all a load of characters, 13 different ones. And each game plays out a little differently based on the questions that are asked and who might be in the middle because even our beloved Sherlock could be in the middle as well. The artwork is spectacular, it's great, love all the characters, they remind me of all the different characters from Sherlock Holmes, and of course, I really, really enjoy deductive reasoning based games, even if they're on the little lighter side. If you're interested in picking up a light deduction game with Sherlock Holmes being at the forefront, then Sherlock 13 is one I strongly suggest for you. It plays two, three, and four players, but of course these games play best at four. I always recommend playing any deduction game with more players, because with more players comes more variety of information that can be deduced around the tabletop. So, yes, do I recommend this game? Yeah, it's a solid little game of fun, nothing super intense, probably a light medium style game, but if it sounds like it's for you, it is for you. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Sherlock 13 by Arcane Wonders. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description. Uh, you can go ahead and click the link, please do so, and see the game, maybe it's something of interest to you. Or, if you really like, you can subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe bell button, and of course, the main button, well, in any order, preferably the subscribe first, if you think we've earned your subscription. If you think we've earned it, go ahead and do so. If you maybe seen more than one of our videos here and you liked it, we greatly appreciate it. There's a live stream every Sunday and Wednesdays, 6 to 8 p.m. PST, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook for Sundays and, face, uh, and whatnot for Wednesdays. Uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to uh, solving the crime with you next time.